for today's video I need this yeah today hi guys yeah today we are talking about carrying on the conversation about Jeffrey Epstein and all the gruesome things that have happened and this is part three of the series apart from this part there will be a fourth part and then I'm done with Jeffrey Epstein coverage and I have no idea what happened with the second part I received the copyright claims on the video from two different sources one was from Netflix the second one was from BBC I managed to appeal the Netflix one uh, under fair use however BBC seemed not to budge on it even though from my perspective it falls under fair use because I only use the small segment in my video in comparison to the full length of the video which is over one hour and I only use the short segment and uh, for some reason most of you I don't even think you received the notifications that I uploaded the video so I'm not sure if you have seen part 2 however if you haven't seen part 2 part 3 won't make much sense because I'm just carrying on from part 2 in this uh, video today so I highly suggest you to watch part 1 and part 2 there is a playlist available which will be on your screen we will the playlist link will also be in the description down below and I can also do another thing if you guys think that it will be more e that it will be easier for you to follow along I can um, I can compile all four parts when I finish with all four parts I can compile them in a full length video and then you can watch from beginning to end so please do let me know in the comments below which option is best for you is it best if I compile all four parts into one video or you can just go by the playlist as it is right now and so yes just a quick disclaimer before I get oh hold on I forgot the word for today and I was thinking about it and it, it seems quite fitting so I'm going to be translating USA United States of America so the way you say United States of America in Romanian is Statele Unite Ale Americi Statele Unite Ale Americi Or in English is USA and in Romanian will be SUA SUA S U A Okay Quickly a disclaimer, I don't mean any disrespect to anyone I talk about in today's video, this is for educational purposes only, all the information that I have is already found in the public domain, I'm using the information and I'm compiling that into a video and I will also be giving my opinions and my own views throughout the video and at the end as well. Thank you so much everyone for being patient. So like I said, like I just said, I'm going to carry on from where I left off in my previous video, the names in the little black book of Jeffrey Epstein. I mean, this might seem like a bit boring to begin with, but please, please bear with me. I promise you it's worth your time so you can have a clearer picture of Jeffrey's intentions. Addresses in the black book for Mike Bloomberg billionaire's home on the Upper East Side and another location on Park Avenue, multiple phone numbers and an email address were listed for Bloomberg. Phone numbers for magician David Blaine and Blaine's assistant are also listed in the book. Allegedly, Blaine put on a private show for Jeffrey's dinner guests in 2003 doing card tricks for people like Sergey Brin, Mort Zuckerman and Bill Clinton aide Doe Band. Doug, Doug, Doug Band. Ghislaine was the one who, as it seems, organized this dinner, which included a group of young women who were introduced as Victoria's secret models. 19 home and cell phone numbers were listed under the name of Alec Baldwin, who made headlines in 2021 after shooting a prop gun that ended up in the death of cinematographer Halina Hutchkins. Halina, Halina Hutchkins. The actor is also known for his work playing Trump on Saturday Night Live. In August 2019, Baldwin tweeted from the account of Hilaria and Alec Baldwin Foundation, which he runs with his wife, quote, The Russians killed Epstein. They are in charge of everything now, end of quote. A Beverly Hills address is listed in Epstein's book under Courtney Love, 
The Widow of Nirvana singer Kurt Cobain. Now, about Kurt Cobain, we do know the controversy surrounding his death and in fact, it was requested by you for me to cover Kurt's death and I will, I promise, I will do that sometime. Spoiler, spoiler alert for Kurt Cobain, having looked at his case, I don't believe for a second that he ended his own life, just as I don't believe that Epstein ended his or, or Ghislaine's father ended his. Other numbers which are listed in this precious little book are four phone numbers all linked to the name Dana. Courtney Love tweeted after it was revealed that her name was in Epstein's book, quote, hey, about my name in Epstein's address book, it's creepy as F that I'm in that thing. I agree. I didn't know him, never met him, didn't know who he was. Apparently, he collected celebrity phone numbers. The end. Hope he burns in Avicii hell, end of quote. Four numbers and email address linked to English actor Ralph Fiennes are also listed in the book. Ralph had a successful career starring in Schlinder's List and the Grand Budapest Hotel, but is probably best known for his role as Lord Voldemort in the Harry Potter films. Singer Phil Collins and his wife Oriane Seavey are also in that book. A work, home and personal phone number in addition to an email address are seen in the document. Jeffrey had a work phone number for actor Dustin Hoffman as well. The actor became a screen icon after starring in The Graduate and went on to have roles in Rain Man and Tootsie. Tootsie, that's such a cute name. Contact information for Elise Hurley is listed in his book but appears to be an address and phone number for Simeon Films located in London. Simeon Films is a company created by Elizabeth Hurley and actor Hugh Grant. Mick Jagger was among the famous people in Epstein's book. Two phone numbers are listed under Rolling Stones star G uh, Mick Jagger's name. The singer was one of over 300 British people listed in the book. American designer Tom Ford and his husband, fashion journalist Richard Buckley are listed among Jeffrey's contacts. Under the word Gucci, where Ford once served as creative director, is a phone number and email address for the pair. Ford owns 22,000 acres of property in New Mexico, which is not far from Jeffrey's Zorro Ranch. Hmm, that seems a bit strange, don't you think? Or do you think it's just a coincidence? A phone number for Tony Blair, the former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, is also listed in Jeffrey's files. The number is specifically for his former advisor, Katie Kay, listed as SEC. Richard, Richard Branson, the British businessman and founder of Virgin Atlantic Airlines, is also on there. Jeffrey had an address in London as well as three phone numbers listed for Branson. Richard Branson, yes. A spokesperson for Branson previously said, quote, Jeffrey Epstein has the island next door to Necker, but Richard has literally only met him once for about five minutes. That's the extent of it, end of quote. The singer-songwriter Jimmy Buffet and his wife, Jane Slugsvall, were also listed. A phone number and Palm Beach address where Jeffrey himself owned a home is listed for the pair. A London address and phone numbers are listed for model Naomi Campbell in his book. She acknowledged her ties to him in an interview in the summer of 2020 saying, quote, Yes, I knew him. I was introduced to him on my 31st birthday by my ex-boyfriend Flavio Briatore. He was always front and center at Victoria's Secret fashion shows. What he's done is indefensible. When I heard what he had done, it sickened me to my stomach, just like everybody else, because I've had my fair share of sensual predators and thank God I had good people around who protected me from this. I stand with the victims. They are scarred for life. For life. End of quote. Jeffrey had three phone numbers listed for Janice Dickinson, who claims to be the first ever supermodel. One of the numbers is listed for Chris Royer, who is another model. Jeffrey had two phone numbers for English actor John Cleese and his former wife, Alice. 
John is most famous for his Monty Python work but has also starred in numerous movies including starring as early Headless Nick in the Harry Potter franchise, Q in James Bond movies and A Fish Called Wanda. These are some really really big screen names guys. Jeffrey's address book included the home phone numbers of billionaires, Wall Street titans, Hollywood icons and top tier athletes. It also included a wide range of everyday people whose lives crossed paths with him and Ghislaine. The 92 page book with 1,971 names circulated widely since the website Gawker published it in 2015, saying it appeared in court documents from Jeffrey's 2008 prosecution. Now guys, I need to say this again, being in the book doesn't mean that the listed person did anything wrong, okay? I'm just getting this out there. McClatchy, Washington Bureau and the Miami Herald called most of the names in the black book that listed US phone numbers. However, because of the obvious controversy surrounding Epstein, a few messages were returned and a lot of calls were being dropped. William Moran, a lawyer specializing in crisis management for the firm Otterburg, said, and I quote, it's a major concern to be grouped together with him. You have your reputation to uphold. A lot of these people are making efforts to distance themselves, end of quote. Those people who did say something, they mentioned that they were in the book because of their ties to Ghislaine Maxwell. Christopher Mason, who is in the Black Book and is the TV host of series Behind Mansion Walls, which chronicles murders in famous houses, said, and I quote, he relied on her to introduce him to all kinds of interesting people, end of quote. Christopher knew Jeffrey through Ghislaine. Quote again, I was commissioned by her to write a song about him on his 40th birthday, to write a song and performed it, end of quote. Christopher said, also saying he ran into Jeffrey and Ghislaine just a few times afterwards. Alan, Alan Cartucci was surprised to be in the black book. He's a bloodstock agent, an expert at finding promising thoroughbreds in New York and Kentucky for clients looking to purchase or partner in the ownership of a racehorse. Quote, I never even met the guy. I think I had dinner once or twice with Ghislaine Maxwell, he said, noting that they met in an airport. Director and film producer Julia Verdin reached at her West Hollywood-based Rough Diamond Productions said that she never met Jeffrey. She knew Ghislaine because she was a colleague of her sister. The same goes for Caroline Rumger, whose high-end jewelry and design is featured in luxury magazines. Quote, Ghislaine Maxwell bought, bought some of my jewelry over the years. I never met Mr. Epstein, she said. Jeff Hirsch never met Jeffrey either, but heard him shout at Ghislaine over the phone. He's in the black book, apparently, because a very long time ago, he sold a $6,000 camera to Ghislaine and went to her home to provide some technical hand-holding for a wealthy client. Quote, she would get very demanding calls from someone who I learned was her boyfriend, this guy Epstein. That was as close as I got to him, end of quote, Jeff said, whose shop, PhotoCare, is a New York institution. Quote, when you went to her townhouse, you walked into the foyer and there is a Warhol painting on the wall. Of Ghislaine, he said, she was gorgeous. She was very alluring. There was always a double meaning when she spoke and you always, you always wondered what it was all about. End of quote. Ghislaine became an international intrigue, staying out of the public eye except to appear in a photo published by the New York Post at the Los Angeles in and out burger holding a book about espionage. London's Daily Mail later reported that, met, that uh, metadata from the photo was tagged with Meadowgate, the name of her attorney and close friend's company. The tabloid said the dog by her feet belonged to the lawyer as well, pointing to this as proof that the newspaper's report was really a case of a staged photo. Ghislaine's father, Robert Maxwell, was a venerable 
British newspaper publisher and former member of parliament who named his yacht the Lady Ghislaine, which we covered in my previous video. Ghislaine's father died mysteriously in 1991, found floating in the, in the Atlantic Ocean and said to have fallen off his yacht. He was buried, not in England, but in Jerusalem, and several books have since alleged that he was an Israeli super spy who was murdered. Robert Maxwell had nine children, most of whom are in the Black Book as well. The Black Book also has some really strange names. Among the entries is Dr. Ruth Westheimer, the 91-year-old sex therapist who enjoyed radio and television popularity for decades. For a certain age demographic, the entry for Ku Stark is significant. She was a former actress model and photographer who dated Britain's Prince Andrew in the early 1980s, causing an uproar that royalty would mingle with the star of a racy coming-of-age movie, Emily, described as soft porn. And we already know all about Prince Andrew and Virginia Jufra. The Black Book is full of big names in Wall Street finance and just a few would discuss their relationship with Jeffrey. One big name is Lou Ranieri, sometimes called the father of mortgage-backed securities. Those complex financial instruments nearly blew up the US financial system in 2008. Both Ranieri and Epstein were big players in the trend towards slicing and dicing of mortgages and other loans into complex securities. And we already covered the financial aspects of this whole saga in the previous part of the series. Others, other people in the book were puzzled as to why they are even in the files. Quote, I met him once at a party. I certainly did not know him well, said Alexandra Sandy Golinkin, who runs Raising the Bar, a career guidance service. Quote, literally, I just met him once. Sorry to be so boring. End of quote. Victoria Gray had more interaction with Jeffrey. She said that he funded her scholarship program nearly two decades ago for young women aged 21 to 35 years old that functioned as kind of a genius grant to allow recipients to pursue research interests. Jeffrey unsuccessfully proposed lowering the scholarship age to 18, she said. Quote, in my case, because I was very good friends with Murray Gell-Mann, I think I was a high-value target for him, and I think he liked me. We used to talk for hours, end of quote, she said of Jeffrey, mentioning she knew nothing of his dark side. Now, because she mentioned Murray Gell-Mann, Murray Gell-Mann was a Nobel laureate who won the prize for physics in 1969. He was one of numerous top-level scientists who became friends with Jeffrey. People from South Florida who appear in the Black Book largely avoided discussing Jeffrey. Like Trump, former Miami Beach mayor Philip Levine appears in the volume with 14 phone entries. He declined to call a Miami Herald reporter, but in text messages said that he met Jeffrey a couple of times, but couldn't recall how they met. You can kind of see where this was going, if you are in my mind space, if you will, just looking back on all of it. Ghislaine's contacts, including celebrities, high-profile people, anyone she interacted with became a name in that black book. Jeffrey's contacts, any people that he interacted with, became a name in that black book. Influential people all over the world were added to that little black book. So, it's safe to assume, in my opinion, guys, that the book did not only include girls who were being used, used but also high-profile clients and potential clients. It was like a business holder, you know what I mean? Let me just write the name down so I don't forget this kind of thing. As if they went through the best of the best from a list and picked names who they believed will serve as a client of some sort at any given point. 
Now let's talk a bit about the flight logs because in conjunction with the little black book these logs provide some really good insight into the whole life of Jeffrey, Ghislaine and their associates. Now we know that the names in the book and flight logs were meant to be under seal and judges and legal teams fought to keep them that way. However, as we all know by now, they are public and unredacted, even though at first they were redacted under the pretense of protecting the innocent people on there. I don't know guys, either protecting the innocent people on there or protecting the high profile, not so innocent people on there. So I guess you can take your pick from whichever you want. Jeffrey Epstein's former pilot testified that a number of famous faces flew on his private jet called the Lolita Express between the early 1990s and 2004. Under oath, Lawrence Weissesk confirmed passengers on Jeffrey's Gulfstream plane included former presidents Donald Trump and Bill Clinton as well as Prince Andrew. Jeffrey allegedly used the plane to attract underage girls and fly them between his residences across the US. The luxury Boeing 727 aircraft was owned by him even though what happened on this flight still remains a mystery. Some of Jeffrey's victims say that he organized orgies board of the three engine commercial jet which thinking back on it I wouldn't be surprised if that was true. The luxury aircraft boasted deluxe furnishings, a spacious galley, expensive cabin lounge and even a master bedroom. The pilot of the plane undertook around 1000 flights during his time flying Jeffrey and others. During the prosecution, Lawrence Wysoski testified that former President Donald Trump was aboard Jeffrey's plane. However, he said that he never witnessed any sensual activity aboard the plane or the presence of any underage girls without their parents. The pilot told the trial, quote, I certainly remember President Trump, but not many people associated with him, end of quote. He also clarified that Trump was aboard Jeffrey's plane before his presidency. In the past, Trump tried to distance himself from Jeffrey and, as I mentioned previously, even banned him from his Palm Beach resort Mar-a-Lago, however, this has not been confirmed. But in an interview in 2002, Trump called Jeffrey a terrific guy who liked younger women in New York magazine. The former president went on to tell the outlet, quote, he's a lot of fun to be with. It's even said that he likes beautiful women as much as I do, and many of them are on the younger side. No doubt about it, Jeffrey enjoys his social life, end of quote. According to the pilot, as The Sun reported in 2019, Prince Andrew flew on a private jet with Jeffrey and his alleged 17-year-old Virginia Roberts. The allegation made in court papers was the first to place the Duke of York and Virginia Roberts on Epstein's plane together. In court testimony, David Rogers, 66 year old at the time, said that one trip saw Jeffrey, Andrew and Virginia heading to the US Virgin Islands. Flight logs from 2000 reported by the Mail Online also show that Prince Andrew was on board Epstein's plate on a flight from New Jersey to Florida. Ghislaine Maxwell traveled on the Lolita Express on a number of occasions according to flight records. She was arrested on July the 2nd, 2020 for her alleged unspeakable part in delivering young girls into the hands of Jeffrey. She is accused of delivering underage girls into his trap by them and putting them at ease as an adult woman as she stood over Jeffrey when he carried out his on November 29 2021 her six-week trial in New York began she was found guilty on all counts but one on December 29 2021 she has yet to be sentenced according to flight to, according to flight logs obtained by Fox News in 2016 Former U.S. President Bill Clinton was a passenger on the jet. 
These logs suggest Clinton took at least 26 trips on the private jet between 2001 to 2003. In 2019, The Sun reported how a woman who claims she was assaulted by Epstein says that she sat in Bill Clinton's personal seat on the plane. She took Bill's favorite seat on the luxury plane and described its bizarre bedroom floors made of mattress foam. And guys, on my Patreon, I have the little black book contents and the flight logs as well. So if you want to see them in full, you can uh, go and check them out on my Patreon. You have got all the links on there. Hollywood actor Kevin Spacey flew to Africa on the Lolita Express in 2002 as part of a project to raise awareness on the AIDS crisis and poverty. He was accompanied by Clinton and comedian Chris Tucker. Regarding the trip, Bill Clinton said of Jeffrey at the time, quote, I especially appreciated his insights and generosity during the recent trip to Africa to work on democratization, empowering the poor, citizen service, and combating HIV AIDS, end of quote. I mean, it's very interesting to hear Clinton say that about Jeffrey because according to various scientists who had first-hand conversations with Jeffrey, he said something else entirely about poor people. You remember how I mentioned that Jeffrey was into the modern version of eugenics, transhumanism, combining genetics engineering with artificial intelligence? Yeah, well, you know, being that eugenics is such a controversial word and action, I am of the opinion that they just modernized the name into transhumanism because this one doesn't really have the controversy behind it, right? Like eugenics does. You get what I mean? Because basically the fundamental belief of eugenics is just the same as transhumanism. Only we combine modern technology to, let's say, achieve it, right? AI, artificial intelligence, okay. Transhumanism equal eugenics, modern eugenics. That's, that's my view on it. So yeah, Jeffrey was a huge fan of eugenics. He even wanted to impregnate women with his DNA in the New Mexico ranch that he owned to get his sperm into the whole world, right? During the same conversations that he had with different scientists, Jeffrey didn't really like the idea of helping the poor financially or medically even. He was of the belief that by not helping and healing the poor, poor people, then we help the planet with stopping overpopulation. Does it sound familiar? Basically, let the sick and poor die because we get rid of people because there are just too many on this earth. It's overpopulated, right? Now, going back to the flight logs, they reveal that Naomi Campbell also traveled on Epstein's plane in 2002. In 2019, like I mentioned previously, she broke her silence on links to Jeffrey, who attended her 31st birthday, like I said earlier on in the video. Comedian Chris Tucker was also part of the group, including Clinton and Spacey, who flew to Africa on the five-day humanitarian trip in 2002. The group visited Ghana, Nigeria, Rwanda, Mozambique, Johannesburg, and Cape Town. Jeffrey's lawyer, Dear Alan Dershowitz took trips on the jet in the late 1990s, according to the flight logs. But the law professor told Goker that he has a very clear, unequ unequivocal recollection of never being on a plane with young women. That's very convenient though, isn't it? Yep. Because as far as we know, Virginia accused Alan of a as well, just as she did Prince Andrew and Jeffrey. So I'm not sure that this is so far-fetched. Alan was on the flight logs, right? He was in Jeffrey's residences. So, you know, Alan did admit to having known Jeffrey since 1997. I'm guessing you admit to the lesser because it's kind of obvious that they knew each other, right? It would be silly of him to say otherwise. You know, you, you say the, yeah, you admit to the lesser so you can say the bigger lie. You know, seed of truth and then you build up the lie around it, right? Dershowitz also published an article in The Spectator where he defended Elaine Maxwell and said that the case against her is far from over. 
After Ghislaine Maxwell arrest, he said, quote, I hope Epstein made videos. There have been suggestions that Epstein made secret videos of all the men who had in his houses and planes. I hope he did and they are all revealed because they will prove I am not among them. I hereby waive any right of privacy in Epstein videos. End of quote. Maybe that Alan got a room which didn't have a camera in it because obviously he's a lawyer and so he's going to cover his legal ass. In my opinion, allegedly guys, just my view. It's also very interesting of this law professor, lawyer Alan here. He was Jeffrey's lawyer as part of a very well-known team of lawyers that he had, very prominent lawyers with some high connections. Alan, for example, was Trump's lawyer at some point, and this team of lawyers, they opposed allegedly for a significant period, time, period of time, the prosecution lawyers, the district attorney, the judge before the non-prosecution, and even the judge before the non-prosecution agreement was in place. And there was witness intimidation as well, victim intimidation, allegedly, allegedly. So, you know, they all went with everything that they had and didn't, and that they made up some, in my opinion, to defend Jeffrey. And here comes the most interesting part of this Jeffrey Epstein saga. It seems that, brace yourselves, because it seems that Jeffrey was the male version of an infomaniac. <laughs> so check this out. According to one of his longtime confidants, Jeffrey Epstein was not a freak. No, he wasn't. He was just sick. Scientist Stuart Piver in an interview to Mother Jones claimed that Jeffrey was plagued by a rare disease that made him horny all the time. Jeffrey had a severe case of what's called satyriasis, the male counterpart of nymphomania. He was beset with this pathology like a disease, according to that guy. I mean, okay. All right, nymphomaniac, the male version of a nymphomaniac, Cyrises, sci I don't even know how to pronounce that. It still doesn't justify the fact that you are underage girls. You are a nymphomaniac, but then go, go after people at your own level, at your own age, and go after people who are giving their consent, grown adults. If you are a nymphomaniac or a male version of a nymphomaniac, it doesn't make you any less to be held accountable just like it does anybody else when you abuse or any person for that matter, right? Nymphomaniac or no nymphomaniac. I'm sure that uh, those nymphomaniacs who really have the disease, I'm sure that they look for sex all the time because that's the basis of it, right? You are horny all the time. And I'm also sure that they don't go abuse people just because they are horny. You know, just like you have uh, women who are nymphomaniacs and uh, they look for sex all the time, you also have men who look for sex all the time, so they come together and they have sex all the time, right? Consensual, I hope, in most, in most cases. So that just doesn't justify, that's just a really ridiculous statement for that person to say, that's just a ridiculous thing for that professor, is he a professor? Yeah, I think I said that, for that professor to say, and in my eyes, it doesn't, it doesn't change the fact that he abused, Epstein abused girls for his own pleasure. Nymphomaniac or no nymphomaniac. That's, that's, that's my stand on it. Stewart said that Jeffrey was his best friend for decades and he acknowledged that he witnessed Jeffrey's virulent libido at close range despite his own claims that jeffrey did stuff with underage girls by the hundreds stewart continued to defend him he blamed the transgressions of his friend on this supposed disease that he had which is funny but honestly is not really funny in the whole sense i am of the firm belief of course in my opinion in my opinion that Whoever defends someone else and they themselves know that the person has a sensual gratification from children is just the same as they are. They have the same gratification from children because otherwise what 
justification in this world is enough for someone to take pleasure in doing stuff with children. Something like pot calling the kettle black kind of thing, right? As it happens, satiriasis or addiction is not even listed among the ad among the over 300 conditions detailed in the diagnostic statistical manual for psychiatric disorders for short dsmv but that didn't stop stewart from rebranding jeffrey's predatory behavior as a serious medical condition because why not if it's not a condition let's just go in that medical or psychological book and just find one little thing that can possibly justify Jeffrey's behavior. And so Stewart did. Whew. I need a break, guys. Like, seriously, I need my pom-poms, okay? I just need the pom-poms here. It's just ridiculous. And the quote from uh, Stewart, my lovelies. Jeffrey was a very, very, very sick man. He couldn't help himself. He was afflicted with satiriasis. If he had tuberculosis, it wouldn't be called a perversion, would it? Because he coughed too much? End of quote. Oh my God, I mean, this reminds me of high-profile individuals trying to normalize pedo behavior by trying to change the law and saying that this is in fact a sensual preference and nothing illegal. We already know that they are trying to make it part of the LGBTQ umbrella. Come on guys, this is just it's just completely ridiculous, utterly disgusting and all those and all those bad words under the sun. Any word that you try to find, any negative word that you try to find fits in this statement of his right here. How can you compare child abuse with tuberculosis? Really? Are we really getting to this point? <sighs> Is that Stuart still alive? Oh my God, because I'm hoping that he doesn't teach anybody else. I'm hoping that he doesn't teach anybody because Stuart, I'm sorry, but your logic is illogic, to say the least. And Jack Farley, who wrote an article for Deal Breaker, was quite right in the following statements. Maybe Tyrannosis Elizabeth Holmes wasn't a con artist, but just an overwhelmed visionary struggling with imposter's syndrome and I covered the uh, Elizabeth Holmes Terranos in one of my previous videos. Another statement that he says, maybe Enron's Kenneth Lay wasn't a crook but just a kind old man whose intermittent hoarding disorder caused him to make a few inaccurate statements. And again, going back to making a condition and a diagnosis just to defend a defenseless, a defenseless person. Like coming up with a condition just because they are someone, right? Yeah. And then another statement that this guy from Deal Breaker said, and JP Morgan's infamous London whale, treatment resistant gambling disorder is no joke. And the very fact that you had to ask shows that you are part of the problem. There was, however, one incident that gave Stuart Piver, the scientist, a bit of a pause there, right? He spoke with one of Epstein's victims, Maria Farmer, who confided in him that Epstein appeared at his Ohio estate alongside longtime accomplice Ghislaine Maxwell, whom Epstein entrusted with procuring new underage girls, or, as Maxwell called them, new buyers, new buyers. Now, you guys, I actually had no idea what new buyers meant, so, of course, Google is my friend here, and all the references that I found directed me to, you wouldn't believe this, poor websites, new buyers, which in any other circumstance I would find interesting and surprising, but for some, or maybe I know the reason, I don't really find it in this case, I don't find it surprising, Stewart, the scientist, found Maria's account horrifying. Oh, really, Stewart? You found her account horrifying, even though you compared Epstein's abuse with tuberculosis. Really? And he said, and Stewart also found Maria's sister account horrifying as well. Her sister Annie, who was also assaulted by Epstein and Maxwell. 
this time at Epstein's Zorro Ranch in New Mexico, you know, the one that he planned to use as a site to inseminate women and mass to create a superior race of geniuses and little Jeffrey Epstein's running around. Yes, that will, would be the world coming to an end. But while Stuart Piver showed genuine empathy for the traumatized sisters, he had far less compassion for Epstein's other victims. From his perspective, the underage girls trapped in Epstein's predatory circle knew what they were getting themselves into. Yes, quote, Jeffrey dealt with a bunch of women who were totally complicit. For years they went, came there, time, came there time and time again. He did stuff with underage girls who knew what the hell they were doing. End of quote. Like, seriously? Underage girls know what they are doing? You have, you have to be joking me with this. I really do hope that this scientist Stewart doesn't have underage daughters or granddaughters because he would definitely blame them for being for example. This guy is disgusting. He's he is beyond disgusting and to think that he's a scientist I don't want to get into that area. Stewart expressed specific doubt about Virginia Jufra's account who accused both Alan Dershowitz and Priest Andrew of SA saying quote that trollop has made an industry for herself out of invest out of inventing calumnies against all these respectable people end of quote. While Piver found much of Epstein's behavior inexcusable, he reminded us that that's the thing satiriasis do, because they can't help themselves, end of quote. Jesus Christ. Oh. Maybe Stuart himself is stricken by a rare disease. He does seem to show all the symptoms of white glove syndrome, in the words of deal breakers Jack Farley. This highly selective disorder gives patients an intense desire to launder the nefarious crimes of their wealthy friends by inventing medical disorders to which to attribute their otherwise immoral behavior. I really like you, Jack Farley. I think that we should be friends. What do you say about that? Hmm? Friends? Yeah. Yeah, because we are so much alike. All these made up syndromes for justification, because why not? Because we are scientists, we are big names, we are associated with big name friends, and so why not? I mean, we can just about create anything and brainwash everyone into believing that it's a disorder, just like, yeah. Yeah, because with people, apparently it's the same preference. Or so they try to put it under the LGBTQ umbrella, because, you know, if that becomes orientation then who can defend children nobody can defend children then because nobody can be held responsible because then everything is legalized okay guys who rambling over and with this I'm ending today's video the last part of this is going to be part four again there is a playlist available and again please do let me know in the comment section down below what do you think it's best for you? Do you want to see all of the four parts compiled into one video by the time I finish with the fourth part? Or would you rather prefer to have them separately in a playlist? Again, I'm saying about part two, for some reason, like I said, something happened. You probably didn't get notifications that the video was published because I myself didn't get any notification that the video was live. So it's probably safe to assume that you might not have watched it. So, yeah, just let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for staying with me in today's video. I will see you in the next one for part four of the Jeffrey Epstein saga. I don't know what other word I can use. Yes. Satiriasis. Whatever. Bye.